Hello everybody, welcome to Primus. This is our program Beef of Belarus with our distinguished, renowned Vladimir Baranich. Volodya, hello. Hello. Vlad is a country consultant and media analyst in the program that we launched a couple of weeks ago. So we'll be talking about different things, but today's theme is why Belarus is not Russia and the added or is it? Would you agree yes. with that tag? Well, uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's discuss today. The weather is very hot. It's, I remember last time I raised like question about <laughs> very politically incorrect. The Belarus is Africa in the center of Europe. So today we are certainly top Africa. of the devil, and it appeared. I read you an article that. Uh, it is even hotter than Africa. So yes, like eight finally, degrees higher than the standard so monthly norm. Thirty-two degrees in sh the shadow, and, uh, and in the sun is like forty degrees. But I like it because I'm true white Negro. White I like Negro. okay. This white one. Negro. Let's uh, talk today about Belarus and Russia. Different aspects: whether uh, Belarus and Russia are the same uh, entities, or they different. What the differences are, what similarities are, and I would like to start with the following major themes, which are culture, religion, language, and history. What is common, what is different between us and Russia uh, in terms of these very important aspects? The last, probably, we shall begin with uh, the history, because uh, it's the, the most important thing where all the difference begins and uh, where all, mm -hmm. everything starts. And beca mm -hmm. because uh, well, you know, uh, again, I always like disclaimers, because uh, when I say something, it's, uh, again, my opinion, it's very, um, uh, how to say, biased. I like, you know, with puns and plain words and, and historical parallels. That's fine, it's your opinion. Parallels. Yeah, because we are, we, we, our, our talk is just, you know, entertainment. This like is not a scholarly program that is dedicated to sure. analysis of uh, uh, objective truths and realities. You <coughs> are just sharing uh, like, subjective views yes. about what's going on around. Like, we are not historians with you. Like a so. good friend of mine, American, he liked it to make jokes about such talks like Mickey Mouse stuff. You know, it's like something... Uh, okay, let's start with one thing. I would state on whether you agree or not. Right. Uh, so I mentioned four things. Culture, religion, language, and history. And one thing that uh, makes us very similar, which is language. Of course, Belarusians don't speak the Russian language in Mos uh, Moscow type or St. Petersburg or Perm and other cities, but at the same time, overwhelmingly, uh, Russian is spoken here, and uh, the government, especially civil society, makes a lot of efforts to renew, to re to give like a boost to the uh, resurrection of uh, the Belarusian language. Would you agree with that? Um, well, if you're too many things, maybe in one uh, bunch, so we have to separate them. First of all, about modern condition, what we have now mm -hmm. in Belarus. Certainly, uh, like 99% and even more, almost 100% speaks, you know, this, uh, everybody speaks now uh, Russian, and uh, uh, in, in past, uh, uh, peasants in, in the village were the, the major uh, speakers of, Belarusian, of the Belarusian, the Belarusian language. Belarusian language. Again, uh, you see how d differently we pronounce it. Yep. I call it Belarusian, you call it Bel Belarusian. Or Belarusian, I would, because uh, well, without double S, sure. it, we, we should pronounce no. it Belarusian. Yeah, now it's Belarusian, Belarusian. Belarusian yes. is, is one S, uh, not, no, no, anyway, not S-H. But I remember Shit. just like when uh, my you know, Englishman used to call it Belarusian, so I call it Belarusian, and this uh, Shin, it's uh, commonly more, actually, it should have been written Belarusan. S A N on the Belarusan, end. If it's well, because it's, it's according to English uh, rules, Belarusan. so to say, Belarusan. A N, right? <laughs> They okay, language makes us similar, and that's why many Russians uh, promoting the so-called Russian world argue that uh, Belarus is also part of Russia. And recently, Putin, uh, talking in the St. Petersburg Forum, also said that we are one country, and uh, though statehood is different, but uh, we should deepen union state based on this kind of similarity. Well, that's a weak argument, because uh, there are many countries uh, speaking the same language, like uh, the best example is... Uh, 
uh, Germany and Austria, right. Canada and the United States. <laughs> well, yes, but I mean, uh, in in old uh, Europe, where you know these nations uh, used to live the same territory, and so uh, and America is not a good example because they all came from somewhere from Britain mm -hmm. uh, Empire. But uh, here we have uh, two different, um, well, I don't know, mm -hmm. nations maybe like you know countries, nations, mm -hmm. uh, and they. Speak Speak the same language, same as in uh, Switzerland, and um, probably you'll find some other countries in Europe where they speak the same language, but they live in different countries. Yeah, but we we definitely state that uh, the Russian language is beautiful, it's harmonic, it's well developed. At the same time, we have a lot of interesting scholarly information, literary products in Russian, and. Uh, Predominantly, about 60% of Belarusians get information and today in from Russian media, of course. which again is a source of uh, a lot of distortions in perception of the modern world, of the life in Russia and life in Belarus. Again, here we deal with a history. Uh, first of all, the bad trick we, we have here with the name. Uh, Belarus, yep. which I already last time I explained what it is. It is mm -hmm. White Russia. It's a historical name of the part of uh, what is now Belarus. So it's white means pure, free mm -hmm. of Mongol Tatars, etc. Different. There can be even mm -hmm. some esoteric names for that are white. I make jokes, you know, like uh, the pure Russians, white Russians mm -hmm. means they're uh, like racially clean Russians. Right. <laughs> so it's just, you know, a lot of room for jokes, puns, and just just speculations. Mm -hmm. But we have to remember that originally uh, this territory was the great duchy of Lithuania. Mm -hmm. Was Commonwealth mm -hmm. later with Poland, with mm -hmm. Rzeczpospolita, Pospolita, mm -hmm. and um, but originally and all you know like Adam Mickiewicz, the famous uh, now Polish poet, but he wrote that uh, he was Lithuanian. So oh, Litwa, which is the more yes, yeah, Lithuania, so, my country. Uh, right, and uh, motherhood. Uh, now there is great sentiment among uh, Belarusian, um, let's say Belarusian, but local here. Uh, let's mm -hmm. call them Belarusian, but. They they don't call themselves, no longer call themselves Belarusians, they call mm -hmm. themselves Lithuanians. Lithuanian. Litvans. Lit uh, Litvans. Actually, actually, not Lithuanians, since the problem here that uh, modern Lithuanians, uh, who, whose you know, intellectuals, they started their national mm -hmm. uh, identity or national resurrection, awakening mm -hmm. earlier than here in uh, what is called now Belarus. Mm -hmm. So they simply took that name, which mm -hmm. is Lithuania, mm -hmm. and and uh, and they just kind of privatized uh, that uh, the whole history of Lithuania. Mm -hmm. However, this territory was modern uh, Lithuania, modern Belarus, and modern Ukraine. So, uh, well, that's right. When you talk, uh, start exchanging views on this particular issue, right? You inevitably bump into a lot of conflicts, perceptions, and essentially uh, that diverts a lot of attention and energy into from a really very important issue that we can influence on. Because it's history when you have like three historians and uh, or, uh, specialists on culture from three different countries, Lithuania or four countries, I mean five, right? Uh, Russia, Belarus. Uh, Ukraine, Lithuania, Poland, you come up into a myriad of different opinions and they will never come into kind of common understanding of history. So there will be a lot of discrepancies, a lot of conflicts of uh, and the different evaluations of what's going on. But so we just uh, state one thing. Uh, history still is uh, the area which divides people. That's why I call history the uh, quasi-science, uh, because right. it's a matter well, it's of interpretation. There are facts right. which, you know, like dig, uh, like archaeologists mm -hmm. dig, or bookworms, like librarians dig, and uh, historians, what historians do, they simply take it as a fair tale and they just uh, put it in the roping of some, uh, of some, you know, science or something like that, but they interpret it. That's right. So language is one thing, history is the second thing, religion. So eight, over 80% of Belarusians believe that they are Russian Orthodox. Uh, a lot of research on how religion influences modus, mode of life, development, well-being, growth, 
truth and uh, the input into civilization and uh, unfortunately Russian Orthodox countries that uh, are predominantly Russian Orthodox uh, show worse performance than the countries with uh, Protestant Catholicism and Islam what is in the religion in the Russian Orthodox religion that um, kind of uh, generates such results is it about uh, God and the relations between religion well, and state? Well, well, Is it about this notion that people are slaves? No, uh, Belarusian people, local, I mean, here is population, here is mostly irreligious. And uh, religion is they're nominally religious. Uh, they only attend church when uh, it's like a magic. Like, for example, when they, the, the church distributes this holy water, and they, you know, stand in line with buckets, with okay. uh, Christmas canisters. and Easter. Well, essentially, uh, we, we have a lot of results saying, uh, opinion polls showing that only about 12 Fifteen percent of Belarusians attend churches on a regular basis, which is every week. Uh, but I think they're about ten percent. Again, churches probably we have more attendees at churches in Protestant communities because mm -hmm. a very strong uh, now a very strong uh, branch. It was a Protestantism, mm -hmm. in new Protestant, because uh, in, in times of uh, Great Duchy of Lithuania, mm -hmm. when, came, mm -hmm. when we returned back to Lithuania. And uh, that time we had reformation of our own, mm -hmm. and uh, but then the later was suppressed by uh, by Russian mm -hmm. invasion, etc. So now we have mostly Orthodox, Catholic, and Protestant. Protestant is very like more but one one two percent. Yeah, Baptist, Charismatics. Um, Something like that, but uh, very, very few Jewish, uh, uh, Jewish people, very few because and, uh, most of them moved uh, uh, you know, into Israel or United States. So that's I think that the growing uh, group of the populations, uh, I don't care about any religion, any gods, because uh, uh, state is the god, or indifference is my god, or uh, current, I don't know, give a shit is my god. You know, current president was named one of his, uh, <laughs> uh, one of these... Uh, orthodox uh, atheist, right? He calls himself. No, 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 no. That's, that's right. He calls himself orthodox uh, atheist. Uh, strange, you know, sounds strange, but uh, Oxymoron. but one of his um, uh, how to call sub subordinates, mm -hmm. one of his uh, governors of the mm -hmm. of the Origin. oblast or region, he once uh, he once wanted to to please him as he said. Uh, something about God, and that guy said to the president, "You are over. You're more than you're God. You're above, over. You're, uh, you're above, above God. You're above God." Right? So yeah. sometimes when people say, "Well, the one," in one word, the one who is about <laughs> above <laughs> God. God. So well, this is the degree of servitude and yes, the slavery exactly. in That's, the mentality of that guy wanted to, nomenclatura you know, to is endless, a right. bottomless, I would but, say. Yeah, you know, Soviet nomenclatura never, but. They were atheists. They couldn't say something about God. Probably they would invent. Oh my something. God! I'm an atheist. That's what they said, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So essentially, <laughs> many things that are in common in Belarus and Russia, and uh, people who can handpick different pieces and make uh, the uh, the picture they want that pleases their own interests or their own group interests. Uh, let's switch on to uh, recent development and the current state of uh, political, civic, and economic freedom. And in this case, if you analyze where Belarus and Russia are in different ratings, indices of world organizations, we see that uh, Freedom House, uh, Reporters Without Borders, Economist Intelligence Unit, uh, pr just we're using different methodologies, but they put us in the same bracket. Authoritarian countries with severe deficit of political, civic, and economic freedoms. Correct. Uh, again, uh, going back to history, these two countries, they were the core of the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. They were like, you know, again, the, the same the same name played a bad trick for Belarusians. They are Russians, white mm -hmm. Russians, but again, they are Russians. So Russians, they claim they are, they are Belarusians are kind of uh, minor brothers, something That's right. like you know. Being this, the origin and the fact that Belarusians are like uh, they uh, talk about themselves as a single, as a, a, a unique nation. When you go abroad, like to a sea resort or a anywhere else, and uh, there are Russians, Ukrainians, Belarusians, and uh, most of the local people, they perceive us as the same 
people, yes. the same uh, country, yes. and yes. that's because of the language, right. and at the same time, even because of the culture. culture. Because I just uh, in the recent years I noticed more and more that Belarusians would like to separate themselves from Russians because they don't want to be interpreted and treated as uh, people with uh, very low cultural standards, uh, very bad behavior, drinking habits, uh, rudeness. That's why, you know, people just prefer to speak even Belarusian language to make themselves different from the Russian. Likewise, even it's even uh, more so about Ukrainians and Russians. Well, drinking and bad behavior are, you know, the features inherent to Belarusians, local people as well. So I wouldn't say... Well, yeah, that's right. But even Russians are terrible drunkards <laughs> or <laughs> roots or something like that. No. Um, here's we just deal with something uh, with um, maybe... Mm -hmm. some complex of inferiority I don't know it just because in in Soviet times mm -hmm. uh, all West mm -hmm. trends would come through Moscow yes yeah. funny it West would come from the East mm -hmm. and uh, well, you know, the rock music uh, fashion whatever so you're talking about Minsk and uh, that part of Belarus because I lived in the next to Poland and for me the West definitely was associated with uh, cultural information yes uh, um, TV images that I got from Polish television, Polish radio. But you were, you know, you were vil dudes from villages <laughs> and you didn't play a big role. No, of course not. So that's why you were just isolated there and nobody heard about you. I was you. marginal, marginal. Yes, marginal. And the, the main life was here in Minsk. And Absolutely, uh, Minsk yeah, I agree with you. And all, you know, bosses were party bosses, everything yeah. was in Minsk. And uh, all new trends would come only in Perestroika. Yeah, and all Moscow. democracy, Gorbachev's democracy, mm -hmm. came from Moscow. And Absolutely. at that time, actually, right. Belarus was called the Vandea of right. uh, Perestroika, which, you know, though who started Keeping history, Soviet tradition. was that Vandea, which was part of right. uh, royalist uh, France during that time. Uh, I, I heard that saying that Belarusians were the most Soviet out of all Soviet peoples. That's, That's why Khrushchev. they... Khrushchev right. commanded Belarusians when he was here, was making a speech mm -hmm. when he was announcing that in, in the year of 1980 uh, Soviet people would live during uh, communism. Well, it strikes me communism. that, uh, Balodia, so many years ago, uh, all these bad things happened with the Soviet Union. Uh, one, over 100 million people were killed or died because of that system worldwide. We had, uh, now we have documents showing that Lenin, Stalin, Dzerzhinsky, all these uh, people they made orders to shoot not just uh, criminals or water war criminals but also innocent people for very minor violations or even for for like uh, the Kladnia they say or, yes. uh, the uh, notes written by neighbors who spied on their neighbors yes. and right now it's still Russia and Belarus still uh, face the same thing we haven't come up in we haven't made peace with our history with our past and uh, the past gives uh, reason for the authorities to reduce and to dramatically decrease our political and civic freedom. Uh, people say, well, why do we need... You remember this uh, uh, well-known movie, uh, To Kill a Dragon, right? Yes. When people, oh, why do you need freedom? Yes, freedom yes. is just to kill everybody around, to do Much whatever you want. want. Right. And this, even now, we start talking about freedom, about free market relations, about private property. Uh, people have this fear that uh, giving Belarusians, Russians, this kind of freedom would lead to chaos, to uh, oligarchy, to very bad things that are even worse than the stagnation we are living right now. You see, again, uh, here so we have the grab of, uh, it's like dead dead man's hand, you know, <laughs> like uh, like those zombies from the past, they exactly. still keep living from uh, from living, so to say. Nobody buried them properly, that's yes. why they're still alive, yes. like Lenin in uh, the center of Moscow. <clears throat> because all uh, authorities now, they are, we discussed it uh, last time, and that we uh, we have authorities uh, inherently, the former Komsomol mm -hmm. Young Party 
uh, leaders mm -hmm. uh, or some small party functioners who mm -hmm. now occupy the major positions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, they live with their past and they are young and they are strong, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et and uh, besides uh, this model of, uh, let's say, state or statehood or of mm -hmm. ruling the state. It's most convenient because... It but that's convenient for the self-elected uh, or self-acclaimed elite, so-called political elite. They keep power. That's they keep power. Well, in, the difference between Belarus, however, and, uh, and Russia today is that in Belarus we don't have this dominance of the network structure called FSB or KGB. We have the, uh, the structure, power structure we are having right now is different because Alexander Lukashenko has never yes. worked for KGB, he's never been colonel of KGB, he didn't have a mission from KGB to uh, regain power in Belarus. Uh, essentially, he was the first president uh, democratically elected because he was uh, a very bright populist at that time. He I promised everybody yes. everything. He promised to entrepreneurs freedom of business. He promised to uh, old people restoration of good old times, restoration of the uh, Soviet statehood, whatever it means. Sure. And that made him president. But then, 25 years uh, uh, after that uh, time, we see that he chose to uh, regulate, to make decisions instead of uh, the political bureau. In the Soviet Union, and uh, even Russia today, the uh, system of decision-making is more kind of dispersed, decentralized. We have Putin, we have so-called many towers of the Kremlin, and they sometimes quarrel publicly. In Belarus, we have just one monumental totem pole that uh, has imposed rules of behavior on all uh, government bureaucrats, ministers, and nobody can uh, publicly uh, challenge Lukashenko almost on anything. Uh, first of all, uh, why one man? Why well, he? For, uh, formally, we have democracy, you know, oh, yeah. according <laughs> to the constitution, but uh, de facto we have uh, monarchy. So it's we have to remember this all the time. Uh, he, the president is the king, right? Uh, and so well, all, every, every lawyer will tell you there are you know elements of monarchy here mm -hmm. because uh, well, it's not bad, not good. I mean, just a state that like from the point of view of the lawyer. It's the, this is the essence of decision making the country because yes, we have democratic procedures but even uh, again uh, what I want to say that Belarus is a tiny tiny territory in comparison with Russia where some regions like some mm -hmm. Saratov or I don't know there is in Siberia there the whole oblast is uh, bigger mm -hmm. than uh, the whole territory of Belarus well and population wise we have population uh, is one Moscow would be you know to match that's right. so let me give you some numbers uh, 147 million in Russia less than 9.5 million in uh, Belarus and uh, Belarus lost about 700,000 people for starting from 1995 while Russia lost 1.4 million but that includes also uh, Crimea and that is why the numbers are not that uh, correct but at the same time uh, we see that many uh, trends in, uh, uh, in, in demography essentially in Russia and Belarus are very common, uh, a, a very gr growing uh, urban population, centralization, at the same time uh, rural population is getting older and uh, people just run from rural areas because they don't have any future regions uh, in Russia more so than in Belarus turned into serfdoms and feudalist units where local authorities with local civil force structures and oligarchs uh, can do anything with the people and Leviathan, this movie show uh, oh, yes. how it is. Um, again, Russia is vast. Well, Russia is so huge that it is physically impossible to impose a strict rule mm -hmm. uh, from or stru strict uh, governmentship from the Mos from from Moscow and from governance the, is a problem. No doubt yes, about it. Uh, it has always been during uh, Tsar regime. That's mm -hmm. why they gave away Alaska to United States mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they couldn't rule it. They you know they were unable to communicate uh, through such territories. Now they can communicate. But France sold Lu 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 uh, many uh, as uh, Napoleon sold uh, Louisiana, I think, to the yes. United States. Well, the same <laughs> also, reason. the same reason, right? Yes, you just draw a, a 
piece of, he, he saw the piece of a map. Yeah, just do whatever map, you right. want yeah, exactly. with this territory. There are uh, Indians and whatever. <laughs> you know, just I don't need that. Uh, yes, yes the same with Alaska. And uh, uh, again, this huge, this vast uh, territories of Siberia, etc. And uh, but the uh, result of that, look, let's just give you again some numbers. Index of personal freedoms: uh, Belarus one twenty eighth, Russian one nineteenth. Essentially the same group. Very severe deficit of. Pro of uh, human freedoms. Index of uh, corruption perception index. Essentially, Russia is 138th, Belarus is 70th, which is a progress due to a uh, different approach of the Russian, of the Belarusian uh, ruler. But at the same time, talking about this, again, personal freedom and perception of, of the past is, which is really shocking to me, uh, uh, but Levada Center uh, uh, pollsters asked uh, Russians about the role of uh, Stalin in the history of USSR and uh, 70% of Russians said that they uh, evaluate Stalin uh, positively and his role in the history of the country and the uh, positive attitude, the admiration, respect and sympathy uh, were expressed by 51% of Russians. From my observation, I, 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 I wonder whether you agree with that or not, is that in Belarus, sympathy to Stalin and uh, the positive perception of that ru Soviet ruler would be lower. Again, uh, Belarus, uh, Russia is um, um, here. Here comes the main, maybe main difference for now, mm -hmm. and a great hope for future mm -hmm. for Belarus, mm -hmm. because the new generation. They have no sentiment towards mm -hmm. Stalin mm -hmm. or, or all that Russian uh, greatness, so to say, all that empire mm -hmm. greatness, etc. Uh, mm -hmm. Young people here, they they are more, how to say, uh, today, uh, you know, day to day uh, oriented. They and because they're closer to Europe, mm -hmm. and uh, it helps again. Now we, we don't have to go to Moscow to get uh, Western <laughs> trends. We have, you know, uh, we can travel directly to neighboring countries, which are now part of EU. Especially right now, when Russia is yes, under sanctions. and Stalin for young people now is especially here is like a Darth Vader. You know, he's kind of, uh, you know. Bad guy or whatever. I think they uh, from, from they know neither Darth Vader nor Stalin today. <laughs> they just from 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 you know Star Wars from somewhere. He's just but even for me Stalin is uh, for my generation was like uh, like uh, some fairy tale. Uh, no fairy tale, fairy tale. But this fairy tale killed so many millions of people right, that but we must not forget about it. And so this kind of perception that Stalin was a good manager. It's okay. Just imagine. Imagine a good manager in Belarus right now, in the collective farm or in the industrial plan that said, okay, let's kill uh, 2,000 workers because they're redundant to our production, they don't show standards of uh, uh, hard work or industriousness. That would just, you know, it's imaginable that people right now, when you kill one person, right, oh gosh, that's a tragedy, right? Two persons, oh gosh, that's a big tragedy. But when you talk about millions, well, in era of computer games, it's uh, okay. So it's, it's one million here, one million there. They play with you know, they they play World of Tanks. They kill millions there <laughs> on the screen or whatever you know, such computer <laughs> games. Now the mentality of uh, modern young people is absolutely different. I understand, but we're talking about the <laughs> perception in general. All the generation should teach young people, and especially schools, uh, they also turned into uh, propaganda, uh, ideological brainwashing units that do not help and do not uh, contribute to the truth revelation of any generation. Yes, but again, people are more pragmatic. They they like what you know. They like comfort. They like uh, stuff to buy. Well, Germans like comfort too, but uh, they hate Hitler and the Hitler and fascism uh, are the thing that, uh, uh, like, ninety nine percent of Germans believe are uh, ultimate evil. Oh, that's very easy to explain. Uh, they were lucky to be occupied by United yeah. States, which uh, very was very very severe about. Uh, 
no mm -hmm. mention of of that uh, evil regime, etc. So they just uh, just imposed mm -hmm. this anti-Nazi stance. And here it was learn from history, learn what yes. it was like under fascism under Hitler, and we essentially, uh, I believe that uh, thing that would s uh, free us from the old very unfortunate past or tragic past is like they have this Aaron Nuremberg on Stalinism on uh, communism in our perception and when I hear right now that uh, like 57% of Americans sympathize socialism uh, and that's for some young people socialism and socializing means the same I just wonder what American school do to uh, brains of American well, young you youth. know United States is a very bad example <laughs> of brain and schooling and everything because they even the very so, such dear word for us is liberal right. is a yeah, exactly. bad word in uh, right. just you know United States everything is strange there okay let's go back to one more aspect of uh, Russia and Belarus and in this case Belarus Belarusian government believe that that it has an advantage it's equality uh, in Russia uh, you have 200 richest Russians that own over 500 billion dollars which is more than savings of all other Russians. The uh, inequality is appalling. It's one of the worst in the world. It's Nigeria level. In Belarus, things are not the same. Well, like dramatically different because we haven't gone through any privatization, any robbery of the country of that scale. And uh, that gives Lukashenko and uh, the proponents of the system of the regime grounds to say that we are better. We are better model than Russia. What do you think about this aspect of inequality? Because that uh, also discredits the idea of democracy, liberal economy, free market reforms, which allegedly happen in Russia. Well, that's a myth. I don't know who believes that. There oh, is many people do. In many Russia. people in Russia. Believe oh. that there is <laughs> they believe that Russia now is a democratic country, that Russia had free market reform, that Russia is a capitalist country. It's predominantly so. Even many people believe that Putin and Medvedev are liberals to be uh, to the outrage of the people who understand what liberalism is. I think those are just... Uh, Compared to... They need, they, they need uh, to be put in asylum. You know, yeah, yeah, but Volodya, that's an easy... Uh, caging them would be, uh, wouldn't be solve a problem because the problem is that we have uh, on the opposite side uh, people like Glaziev, people like Parakhanov, people who have uh, even Russian Orthodox Church ideologues. They see the world quite differently compared and one of the arguments I heard from Russians is that if you we don't support it try to uh, influence uh, Putin and Medvedev these guys came over uh, would step in and the their aggressiveness would be double or triple the size of what we are having right now well we can easily call them freaks but <laughs> yeah, right. uh, but but they are doesn't change worse. their behavior no no but they were they they just uh, they just feel what is uh, what can make them money what can uh, make them you know demand it by the regime i'm mm -hmm. i'm sure if there was a liberal regime they would be the same pro liberal etc such people is just uh, the turn where wind blows. So, no, but again, it's uh, Russia has never been a liberal country in any aspect. Again, this is the history. It's yes. just you know, it's it's uh, the the great myth that Russia. Well, declarations by uh, uh, Gaidar or uh, by Putin, by Dmi uh, uh, Dmitry Medvedev, they don't make any difference because we analyze real politics, real policies that were conducted by these guys, and they were definitely pro-state, pro-Leviathan. Russia uh, has never lost, has never uh, freed itself from the grip of Leviathan. Never. On any again, any uh, part of its recent history. Again, the historical tradition in this Russia is so huge, it's very awkward. It's like a huge ship, like, you know, that uh, Titanic. <laughs> they couldn't turn from the iceberg and that's, uh, it's going on its course and it's mm -hmm. even huger than, it's like Jules you know this floating uh, we call this floating island remember there was mm -hmm. huge ship which like the size of an island mm -hmm. so the same is with Russia it's very difficult to to 
turn it uh, there or here. It's just a, a lot of inertia, I mm -hmm. would say, political, social, economical, many such things. Belarus is tiny and... Um, At the same time, this, time, this, this size here is not uh, that important because we see that uh, the image of uh, social orientation of economic proficiency of competitiveness in the hands of, in the heads of uh, our rulers in, in Lukashenko in particular uh, and his sympathy to the Soviet past is much stronger uh, Putin uh, Medvedev they say well we, yeah, we know that there's no way for the Soviet Union to come back they will never uh, try to restore that though they definitely try to centralize uh, economic decision making and to nationalize assets but Lukashenko finds it difficult even to privatize little guys, small companies, though they are, uh, are very bad managed. They are like uh, they generate toxic assets. They never pay taxes. They ruin employment opportunities. At the same time, I do not see a single powerful argument to persuade Lukashenko to change his policies towards free market. Well, that's because he became, or he used to be, but this is his matrix of his behavior. He's captured in this cage of uh, the one who is above God, you know. He, <laughs> he can't be, he can't uh, behave Doesn't otherwise. He has to be, there was a joke, you know, the popular mm -hmm. joke, he has to be uh, a cadaver or, or, you know, the mm -hmm. de dead man at every funeral mm -hmm. or, or a bride at every wedding. No. So, or bridegroom at every wedding, mm -hmm. so to say, if he's bridegroom. So he has to pe play a key role everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's just his um, nature of his character. I think that the uh, state uh, um, itself in Belarus is more repressive. Uh, it doesn't allow that much corruption and black economy. But surprisingly, or paradoxically, uh, the availability of gray economy in Russia uh, kind of expands freedom of uh, cooperation, of exchange between people in uh, in Russia. Like, for example, in uh, they say that if you have the same legislation uh, that regulates uh, economic activities, investment activity, customs regulation, it's m much easier and uh, less costly to do business in Russia than in Belarus, especially for SMEs. There is very important uh, thing I have to remind those who don't know it uh, that uh, about legal matters mm -hmm. in Belarus if we have a priority of uh, laws mm -hmm. uh, there is the, the the top is constitution and uh, decrees by the president mm -hmm. then go some governmental decrees and only in third place and mm -hmm. not necessary to implementing mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. are international treaties oh yeah international so treaties. that's very important because if uh, for example uh, for example, let's say uh, s some businessman uh, married a local woman here, mm -hmm. they have common, you kids. know, not, not necessarily kids, assets, I mean, assets. Uh, assets mm -hmm. uh, say mm -hmm. some, some enterprise or some business. Uh, again, if uh, they, they in case of divorce, everything mm -hmm will be preferred for his wife who is local because uh, international international laws they they work only on third part and they are mm -hmm. not uh, necessary to be implemented essentially here. this uh, legal nihilism is uh, common both in Belarus and in Russia we believe that our uh, what is good for Belarusians especially yes. in the through the eyes of uh, the courts that definitely are uh, politicized uh, and under the impact of executive and legislative powers uh, that says that uh, uh, surprising thing is that uh, Russian and Belarusian uh, oligarchs or, or uh, subsidars I call them uh, they prefer if they have some arguments even now we talk about milk um, we talk about oil we talk about uh, uh, sanctioned products uh, government structures cannot come to terms and c cannot agree on the same uh, perception of the union state agreement and different trade deals they need to go to arbitrage Stockholm Paris London because they don't trust judges they don't trust the institution of the court exactly. and they believe that rule of law uh, does not exist yes. it's like it's an interpreted by bureaucracy in their own favor because uh, <coughs> bureaucrats they take care mostly about their own 
uh, that, pocket. That's what makes bureaucrats uh, universally common. Yes, but here <laughs> they feel like a fish in a pond. You know, they they, they just feel naturally here. But sometimes, well, that's that's surprising because sometimes if they don't behave in a proper way in Belarus, they are put behind bars. And Lukashenko, in this case, he cares about his reputation of the person who fights corruption because been, he began this campaign 25 years ago. You remember, I fight corruption. He's been fighting corruption for 25 years, and the corruption is still there and uh, and uh, kicking uh, quite healthily. Uh, Putin, while uh, corruption is definitely much more ingrained in the uh, Russian uh, system of decision making, but there corruption makes things more predictable. I heard that, for example, if the uh, uh, first uh, the parties of the agreement agree on the kickback size, mm-hmm. and if that is agreed that the kickback is uh, 80%, so you make this kickback, but then you can take care of the rest without any hassle. In Belarus, it doesn't matter what you agree on in the very beginning, but in two, three, five, twenty years, uh, like with uh, Yuri Chizh, a very uh, well-known Belarusian businessman, uh, the authorities can re uh, can uh, re- kind of uh, revise the agreement and the papers and say, well, you know that we made a mistake twenty years ago, so we nationalize your assets. Period. Again, this is due to uh, the fact that Russia is more decentralized because it is huge and mm-hmm. it's been ruled by, say, many local kings. Mm-hmm. And Belarus, we have only one king. Again, this is uh, the matter. If you go to, to yep. separate uh, mm-hmm. kingship mm-hmm. of you know separate territory of where yeah. this such bureaucrat rules, like say some area in Siberia, you'll see the same Belarus. Mm-hmm. Uh, in uh, in everything Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. maybe even worse so right. so uh, we see that a lot of commonalities between our countries uh, though the uh, power structure in Belarus and I think that would be uh, true to say that Lukashenko is not interested uh, in uh, merging with Russia in becoming part of Russia he would like to get resources from Russia to get cheaper oil and gas to be able to uh, uh, make the best use of different sanctions and trade barriers that Russia erected itself, but uh, it will never. Uh, he will never support the idea of uh, f- of uh, forming one state. Do you agree with that? Well, it's more convenient, of course, because uh, not reforming economy, uh, not yep. getting the resources from inside. He has to get resources from outside, mm-hmm. mostly from Russia. Uh, there is mm-hmm. common, you know, the common uh, saying: saying mm-hmm. he sells mm-hmm. uh, kisses for oil. Yeah in exchange for oil, for money, for preferences, for everything, later, which again comes into mm-hmm. big money. And sometimes from West, and again, he plays with West, uh, saying, well, if you're not good with us, mm-hmm. if you don't give us this or that, uh, we will be with Russia, mm-hmm. Russia will take us, everything like that. And with Russia, he says, well, if you are not good with us, we'll mm-hmm. go to the West, and we will be Westernized. We'll, uh, so this very... Uh, tricky. Uh, it's v- he just uses the uh, geographical and geopolitical position of Belarus. Mm-hmm. So it's just a uh, matter of getting resources and money without doing nothing, like you know some fairy tale uh, characters. Mm-hmm. You, you know, asking some something, for doing nothing and getting everything. Uh, does it make Lukashenko defender of Belarusian sovereignty and uh, somebody who preserves and creates changes, uh, ch- chances for future generations to turn Belarus into a really independent state? No, I don't think so. No, it's uh, so far as, as I can see it, uh, having certain knowledge mm-hmm. of international law and, and mm-hmm. history, and, uh, and especially history. I studied mm-hmm. history, mm-hmm. you know, a lot, especially United States and many other historical. Uh, periods um, mm-hmm. many parts of the world um, that's counterproductive that's uh, actually Belarus is more like say a puppet state of mm-hmm. Russia it's uh, um, I don't see there are, there are formal uh, mm-hmm. features of or certain parts of 
independency, but uh, Belarus is not independent uh, de facto, you know. Just well, that's, uh, we'll see, because on the 21st of uh, June, uh, again, the, the, the Prime Minister of Russia and uh, Lukashenko... So using, uh, this union with Russia, again, we have the same document signed as union. Union state, nobody knows what to, to do with that. And that's, again, that's about the uh, surprising power of interpretation that can preserve a formal Belarusian independence for some time, because uh, now we're talking about the time period uh, until 2024, where uh, there will be the next presidential election in Russia. If Putin doesn't run, or if Putin decides to change things in a different way for he, for himself to stay in, in, in power, Lukashenko, if he uh, takes care of the economic policy first, he applies this uh, Bill Clinton's motto, it's economy stupid, and he uh, rejects this long-term and very toxic idea that Soviet-style st planned economy, statehood, state-run economy is good for the country, then he can really strengthen the institutions and the uh, the people that would be more uh, pro-independence, pro-Belarusian, no pro-Russian. If he doesn't do that, if people like big state collective, uh, big state uh, uh, plans or uh, collective farms or even uh, Siliviki so-called, if he doesn't perform any reforms, they will definitely like to have the same kind of power Russian counterparts have, like generals, like KGB, FSB, you know, there's all these scandals and corruption cases when some colonel or generals own huge uh, plots of land, they get a lot of cash from unknown sources, and I'm, I'm sure that Russian generals uh, love to, to be in the position of their Russian counterparts. Uh, you know, I'm, although I'm very pessimistic, as you are, about current situation in Belarus, I'm more optimistic uh, with the future mm -hmm. development. Uh, mm -hmm. What I can say, it's my opinion, mm -hmm. that Belarus is doomed to independence, and uh, Russia will never take over this territory because it is not good for Russia itself. I like your choice of words, doomed. Okay, destined. Doomed is like something you're doomed to, to like perdition, to destruction. Destined, to, well... To no, don't because it's so far we have bad. Um it is not going destined this well maybe destined but as I say played on words that uh, so far we have these zombies ruling the country <laughs> so it's just you know just again my, my, my play on words so again destined right. better you know uh, what else I want to to recommend those who listen to us mm -hmm. I put on my website a great uh, number of uh, there's a playlist mm -hmm. of videos done mm -hmm. by one Englishman mm -hmm. he's he's very famous now on video blogs on YouTube mm -hmm. he's Englishman he had, uh, his former wife was from here, from, from Belarus, and he travels all around the world, and he made like maybe 20 videos about mm -hmm. Belarus, mm -hmm. going to different uh, mm -hmm. cities, towns, mm -hmm. and brilliant. He, 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 he always, again, um, says Russian, then he says, no, Belarusian, and, but uh, on the level of ordinary people, which is the best video survey of this society. So if you go to my website, expat.by, there is a link to this Right, put, uh, we'll put a link so that people can uh, do that. But so finalizing our program today, is we can say that Belarus is not Russia, sure. though we yes. speak very similar language, uh, though uh, our history is uh, different, though uh, in, uh, our history is different, our economic models are different, though they, they have a lot of common features and uh, in this kind of uh, architecture, political economic architecture, uh, there is much room for a lot of conflicts and a lot of uh, changes in the architecture in the coming years. So I think that uh, uh, I wouldn't be more skeptical than Valodia in terms of uh, this doom <laughs> for independence as in 1991. Zombies are still there. Still there. But I think that uh, I would uh, rather uh, support the idea of many uh, people getting engaged in uh, civic activism, information activism to get more uh, Belarusian content in their daily lives, in their decision making than the Russian content, which would uh, speed up the uh, processes of turning Belarus into a real European 
nation? Because, uh, again, a mentality of our people is different from those from yep. Russia. It's uh, quite visible even, you know, if you watch that guy uh, or if you come here and communicate with people here in Belarus, it's ordinary people, and go then to Russia. Uh, I won't go into details how they're different, but they're different, much right. different. They're more, let's say here, they're more European than uh, in Russia. Yeah, we like to see us ourselves as more European than Russians, but many Russian colleagues, especially uh, uh, in the in the territory before Moscow, most of are definitely uh, are very similar to us. I mean, talking about uh, people who are not brainwashed by Russian television yes. and not part of... Uh, the tyrannical structures. Volodya, thank you for your input and the uh, participation in the program. Uh, that was the B for Belarus program, and uh, let me remind you that Vladimir Boranich is a country's consultant, media analyst. Uh, we'll be happy to share our views, ideas, and uh, links on what we know about Belarus and Russia and many other topics, and uh, listen to us. In two weeks, we will dedicate yes. our uh, next program to more issues about our country that uh, could uh, deepen your understanding of us and make us uh, closer to you guys, people who speak English and do not live in Belarus. If the zombies won't devour us, we'll be here in two weeks. Yes. We de-zombie your perception <laughs> of the world in terms of Belarus. Okay, guys. See you. See you. Bye.